first track. This is a debut. This track is uh, being recorded right now. It's called Yeti on the Mic. Yo, downtown with the honey deal, kind of funny feel. Now that Mitzi's gone, how am I supposed to get my feel? I move past it, eat a whack, MC for a mill, it's drastic. Facts is he stay bent like elastics. I give them nothing but realness. They'll throw shit at the wall just to see what sticks. You can never ever put me in a box that fits. I'ma talk my shit. It's logic that something's got to give. Ever since Yeti made the pure entry, that's when they learned that the rhymes were exemplary. I'll rip a gut of one half like the sentry. What? Recite sons out of war from memory. On the way, oh behave, he used to have a crush on Romy Mays And won't stop till he rolling in the jag I could break in all my legs, still pull up like Snoop at the VMAs Everybody watch, be amazed, check the stats, drop the S for some R's Hit you with the brrrr raps, I'ma play with the words and disperse facts It's a Mark Morrison return of the Mac, but yet he was your followers I don't make this music for followers. Excuse me as I not apologize. I'm dollar wise. These clowns is broke. Penny wise. If I open up a window, we'd smoke a block. The skies, wounds is cauterized. Even the mental, the way it be natural, you would think it's accidental. But it's quite clear that these kids lack essentials. Vitamins, minerals, and credentials. You got potential, but like family, so what? Blood's thicker than water, but the paper soaks them both up. Best on the list, who would have guessed it exists? And you've been looking at it ever since I stepped in this bitch. Fire! Uh. Yeti on the mic, spit the fire. Yeah. Yeti on the mic, spit the fire. Yeti on the mic, spit the fire. This goes out to Sean Geek and the Fast Fet podcast. It's like my favorite, like, tragically hip song. Swing. Ugh. That's good. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I like to... I can't believe no one's... Have you ever heard that sampled before? I can't believe no one. I've never heard that sampled before. No, I can't believe no one's done it. I don't know if Todd recognized if if I don't know if Todd recognized what song that was. Uh, which hip song that was? Uh, I'm not good with names. <laughs> it's <laughs> Grace Two from Day for Night, opening lead track on that album. My favorite hip track of all time. Yeah, well, so probably mine too, or one of them for sure. It was the song they played on Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live when Saturday Night Live. Mistake. Yeah, right. Well, they, well, they they played that song, and then Lauren Michael said, uh, "Can you play that other song? Um, the other Blow It High Do? Can you play New Orleans? No, we're playing only songs off the new album. <laughs> but we need you to play your hits." No, we're the tragically hip. We're gonna play the songs we want to play. That they, that's what they did. <laughs> it was like fucking awesome. Gord was so. I remember he was so nervous. He blew. He made a mistake on the first line. He's supposed to be I'm fabulously rich, and he says, "I'm." That's when he first says, "I'm tragically hip," and that's. Oh my god! Perform, and they. That's how they performed it in concert. Ever from since. Then on after, yeah. That Shit, that was from Saturday Night Live. That was Saturday Night Live, yeah. Ooh, some trivia. Ooh, <laughs> trivia night. I didn't know that. And he looks nervous as shit if you watch that clip. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah he's, were... he's very, like, in himself. And he's just, he's just yeah. doing his, oh, fuck. That, that's one of my favorite performances on Saturday Night Live of all time of any band. Yeah. Like How many that. Canadians tuned in that week to Saturday Night Live? Like, all of us. I believe it's awesome. It. Great moment in history. I was too young to respect what was happening back then. <laughs> <laughs> to appreciate what was happening. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we're so were we. Yeah, we're too young. Yeah, we didn't know. We were, I, was still I don't think I there. had cable, so I, I don't think I saw this Saturday Night Live. I think, I think, honestly, I think they played it. I, I saw, I watched it at some bar, and I think they literally stopped everything at the bar. To play Saturday Night Live live, they they stopped all the dance music in the bar. 
then stopped playing. Everybody watched the performance. Oh, that was a and they had it cranked. Moment. Yeah, it this was a huge f- moment. Yeah, and they still didn't take off in the states. Yeah, I don't know what you got to do to be appreciated in the states. God damn your lyricism! We cannot understand you. <laughs> Wait a minute, this song's intelligent. What do we do with that? You mean I have to think about my music? God damn it! I'm not <laughs> doing that. Get oh man, out of here. I'm not gonna lie. After we uh, tap out here, I'm probably gonna put day for night on <laughs> good fucking record um okay so so the so we're, we're gonna start tapering off to the end here so i want to cover a couple of things before we do that um so the release that you got coming out on what day is that june 28th june 28th june 28th check your calendars folks this episode will be released just before that release of bs raps performing it into the music and this release is it, it's kind of a whole bunch of stuff from that you've been working on for the past few couple of years is that right yeah it's a collection of uh tracks that i've kind of perfected over the last couple of years um some of them are re uh, hashes of stuff i didn't feel like i did justice the first time i got a i remember caught from before the yeah caught the mouth is is a newer track and i'm just that's going to be part of the the ep um i called the ep i made these for you uh and uh i did the the artwork myself for the ep and i'm nice. really happy with how it turned out actually and i can't wait man to to get in front of that crowd add into the music it's gonna be so much fun i'm trying to drag my uh cohort red rhino out from pure entry so Red Rhino, I know you're listening to this. I know you can hear me, you son of a bitch. You're going to come to this show on Friday. You're going to perform with me, and it's going to be fucking awesome. The challenge has been issued. Mr. Dave, go do your homie proud. Absolutely. I love that guy. I love that guy, too. He's been on our show a few times now. Dave's awesome. Um, okay, so after this, so this is the big thing you've been leading up to getting this release out. I'm still going to press you for a physical copy at some point. I know you don't have any, but you, you, I, I, I need physical shit. I want physical shit. I want to play it behind me. There is a CD player in my car. There's a CD player. I want to fucking pop that disc in, fucking turn that shit up. Oh, yeah. Like- I think that would look like an awesome CD too. I'll, I'll see. I'll, I'm gonna do my best to make that happen. And if you need help with the, uh, I, I've, I've I've got some technology on my end. If you need uh, a couple of pointers, because we did ours ourselves. But and then so once this is done, what's the plan? To do a bunch of shows, promote the shit out of it, hit up a I bunch want- of venues. Is there venues that you're eyeing that you want you want to perform at? Uh, I got my or mitzvahs. I don't know. I got my eyes on a few venues. I want to throw a big barbecue at my place and kind of put together a private event and try to bring some uh, people from the scene out to do a show and just kind of do it all indie in house in my backyard kind of thing. Those are the best shows. They are the greatest of shows. Um, So that's something on my radar for later this summer. But, uh, yeah, but I'm going to definitely reach out uh, and try to get some shows booked for this uh, EP. I got some um, contacts I want to re- reach out to. Uh, I got some, my buddy out, um, Benson, who might be able to book me some shows out in uh, like Toronto and stuff. And then maybe see, I'll that's, what you, that's what you need to do. Yeah, I would love to take a trip out there and do my thing. I would love to, like, honestly, it's... Uh, it's hard to network with the the hip hop community in this city, or at least I find it's hard for me. Um, and uh, but uh, I, I there's so many so many talented artists I would love 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 to share the stage with. Um, Name drop them right now. Well, there's there's uh, there's there's Mookie, my boy uh, TJ's doing his thing. Um, there's uh, CJ the Gray. Oh my goodness, he's the man. Um, 
you know, you got uh, our boy Tony. He's spinning records at Sukram's Brewery all the time. Uh, there's a lot of people I would I, I want to reach out to and get some get some stuff we're going with. Um, I'm working on a track with this uh, uh, this one local artist. Um, and uh, I, I don't want to. It's supposed. To, it's like his debut thing, so I don't want to give him away just yet. But yeah, um, I'm trying to bring my drag my cousin into making some music with me. She's a really talented comedian in the city. Her name's Jaden, uh, and I know she she likes to sing and play guitar. And I would love to get to work with her to put together some tracks. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> She's like, I want to see who you're talking to. <laughs> and uh and then I, honestly my big focus after this release is gonna be my next EP. Uh, I already have the theme, everything all mapped out, man. I've been planning this one for years, but it's I'm just gonna I'm finally gonna get this one released and then I'm gonna get the ball rolling on this next one. It's gonna be called the local samplings and it's gonna feature only local artists that I sample and work with. I've been working out. I've been already got a few tracks um, with uh, this uh, electronic artist. Um, he does like uh, soundscapes, uh, electronic soundscape style, like synths and stuff like that. His name's Patrick Michelin. Super talented guy. He has a radio show on uh, the University of uh, or the CKUW radio okay. channel. Yeah, and and then. Uh, I'm working on the I really even the even when I'm going with um local artists it's artists you wouldn't typically think yeah like I, I got this one I, I'm trying to sample this I got a track I sampled by bicycle face oh. I don't know if you heard of bicycle face <laughs> I fucking have heard of bicycle face I love bicycle face they're fucking awesome and yeah uh, Paige Drobottom. I got a, I'm working on a, a track with her. Now I haven't reached out to any of these artists. I want to put the like the beat and the at least the, put it together and then send it, it to them together. after. So they so they know what they're signing off on. You know what I mean? But the ones I've reached out to so far have been like, oh man, this is amazing. Uh, yeah, Fuck yeah, percent. Uh, yeah. The Northern Royals. I'm I'm working on a track where I like a remix with them. Yeah, it's. It's gonna be. I can't wait, man. It's a lot of fun. I got a lot of momentum under my belt. I'm gonna. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw a name out to you that I think would be wicked. I think the two of you would work well together. So taking a listen to what he's got, and then sampling something from his because he's a sampler too. Uh, a diphylamide. Diphylamide. A diphylamide. I will send you. I will send you a link to his shit. This guy's the. This guy's fucking dope. Uh, we played we played on the same bill with him before. Uh, Anthony Vallad, fucking wicked. His shit is next level. He's a one man band. He plays all the guitars, all the keyboards, and all the programming, all the beats. It's all him, one guy. And he also does videos. He takes public content, video stuff, and makes his own videos using 3d old 3d imaging and you, you you gotta fucking talk to this guy this guy's like fucking oh, definitely. Definitely. i'll send you his shit like that's a guy that needs to be sampled and that guy's that's a that's another guy in the city that people need to be more aware of um but anyway i'll I'll send you his shit tomorrow at work but there's gotta, a lot of hidden gem, gems in this city yeah tons winnipeg it, Per capita, there there is no city that has more talent than this city. I, I agree, I agree. So it's on. It's an honor to even be uh, on stage in this city doing my thing. Uh, the shows with Pure Entry have been awesome. Have been super fun, and I'm looking forward to doing this first solo show. Yeah, wicked. Okay, so where can we find you? BS Raps two hundred four. Like everything, man. Instagram, Facebook, uh, email, bsraps204 at Gmail. Insta is bsraps204. Facebook is bsraps204. I got put it together, put the whole social media package together really. That's very smart. For everybody. You also got your, you get your Manitoba music page, which I get up here. 
Lots uh, of photos. Email BS Raps 204 at Gmail. Hey, fuck it, even has your phone number here. I'm the, I don't know if I want to give your digits out. Oh, but man, do it. Are you sure? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> they can go um, to the Manitoba music site to get those. Yeah, look up, look BS raps. It, it is good shit, man. Like I, I don't know, it, and I, I, I think Todd would agree with me. But like, we like having people on the show that are fun to talk to, um, or kind of come a little bit, like a little bit outside the norm, a little bit interesting, a little bit different, and stuff like that. And we don't do a ton of recurring guests, but the recurring guests that come on, they gotta be, they gotta fit a criteria. No, no offense to the people that haven't been on more than once, but there's certain people, there's good chemistry and there's good energy. So that's kind of why I wanted you back on. Absolutely. And uh, I hope to be on again for the, in the near future for that next release. Cause uh, Fuck, I'm, I'm looking forward to that next release. I'm, I'm super stoked. I love it. I love totally, it. and I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now. If, if there isn't any Sean and Todd on that fucking thing, I'm going to be <laughs> to come and kill you. <laughs> Oh, I'll get you guys on there. Mm-hmm. We, I got samples. We got our whole recording ready to go. Let's let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, awesome. Okay, thanks, Brian. Thanks for coming out. Stick around after I uh, hit the stop record button. But uh, thanks for doing this. People, please check out BS Raps. He's doing some pretty unique and interesting shit. Go check him out. He's got to show it into the music. Go do it. Go see it. Links in comments below welcome to the Sean Geek and Fast Ride Podcast how are you doing Toddy uh, pretty good I've mowed the lawn like three times this week <laughs> <laughs> all the rain we've gotten it's been crazy oh, that's ridiculous well, I'm going to tell you right now this invisible mug in front of you here that you can't see. Oh, is it green? Oh, <laughs> there you it's go. like a green screen disappearing. I'm not going to lie. There's there's an alcoholic beverage in there because I needed it this week. Wow, and it's only Tuesday. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the, the person that we have on the show, you can probably relate to the, the last like crazy couple of weeks of our job. It's been crazy. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm tired. I was fucking tired. But let we'll let you introduce yourself, sir. Who the hell are you? Hi, this is uh, BS Raps, a.k.a. Yeti Van Halen, a.k.a. Winnipeg's Best Kept Secret. Not after we r- dropped this episode, no. Not at all. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll, 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 you'll, we'll get you played in Mumbai. Oh, I'm down. I'm down from Mumbai. I'll go. Mumbai. We have we have the big audience down there. So hello to the people in India. <laughs> it's true though. It's honest. But anyway, hey. So, Mister BS, Mister Yeti, uh, we've had you on the show a couple of times before. Now you have a release coming out. On what date? That will be uh, June twenty eighth, Friday at into the music it's gonna be lit it's gonna be fun i got a whole bunch of surprises lined up for everybody uh, i can't wait like i've been looking forward to this for i want to say like months but it feels more like years you know what i mean like this is almost like a coming out party for me and uh i'm gonna do it big man i'm excited i like into the music great place and i like that we're we're seeing your not just you we're getting a bunch of artists that are that are doing shows there they're playing shows it's a fucking record shop it's a fucking music place a place to buy physical media it's just wicked so you know it's going to be jam-packed with like music lovers right like absolute music lovers Uh, i can't wait i'm trying to convince them to let me uh you know, instead of paying me out for the show, just let me trade for some records. Give me some records. We'll be all cool. <laughs> so are you using uh, old school uh, vinyl for your productions? 
No, like very, very rarely. I have sampled using uh, vinyl because like some tracks you just can't get anywhere else. They're so obscure that you just, you have to use the vinyl that you have available. But no, no, not, not very rarely. Usually I'm just uh, digging for samples on the, on the internet and, uh, and keep it an ear out for stuff that uh, most people haven't heard before. I like, I like to use old, and and new music like I, I i branch all over the place and uh actually i got the this one project in my I lined up for after uh this next this release i'm putting out and it's it's gonna and it focuses a lot on local artists and sampling their and their music specifically now, i was wondering about that because we were talking about that and you were saying how you're going to sample some local stuff and you had sent me a bunch of tracks to listen to which was which is great. And I'm like, okay. And I was, and I, and I thought maybe this was some of the stuff and I'm like, okay, who's this? Who's this? Because you, you're making call outs of the Burt, Burton coming theater. And, um, and there, there's, I mm. like that. There's a lot of like random call outs to just Winnipeg shit. In the club, uh, in the club intro. Yes. Yeah. And you had like a jazz singer in the background, you know, while you're rapping over that. I, I like the, I like the way you use that. I like the way you use those samples. Uh, I mean, you've got a uh, uh, man from FGC. You've got like a telephone mic rap type that you're using uh, that has that, that different sound. And then Cotton Mouth, you get that uh, little story. It sounds like um, kind of like a record skipping, kind of like an old uh, uh, Cheech and Chong record where they got that oh, thing nice. around while, they're, while they're, the skit's going on in the, in the background, the record skipping type of right, thing right. in the background. And you're rapping over that, and then there's like a '60s singer that kind of comes in every once in a while, and it just it just blends like really, really nice. Oh, thank, um, you. thank you, appreciate that. And uh, and the realist, uh, it, it's almost like a cool in the gang groove at the beginning. Yeah, with a, a good funk. Part. Yeah. And then you've got like a '60s singer in the background, so it, it's like you've got all these genres and different different eras as you're rapping which which makes it i mean if you listen to acdc it's pretty much the same beat for every song that they do so you can right. tell them right away but for you you've taken all these different aspects of songs and you've incorporated it in your in your rap and it's it's very unique i i don't think i've ever heard anything you know quite like that usually it's just whatever beat that's you know you know and, and the it's rap a standard thing. beat yeah 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 but you've got all these things in the background it's like when you're listening to uh say a uh, Def Leppard and then you, they, they've got these little things in the background that have Reagan talking in the background while there's something going on. It's almost like that. You've got things going on and you really have to pay attention and it's not, and it's something where you could listen to it a couple of times and you might say, Oh, I, I missed that the first time, which is, uh, which is really, really cool. Oh man, you guys, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, did, Todd did homework. This is awesome. I don't usually do homework, <laughs> but, but you uh, did. But yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, I guess at the very end of, I guess, uh, the realist, you've got the, it's like an ind indigenous message kind of in the background. You know, what, you know, what do you, you know, what are you going to do? Sorry. Um, what are you going to fight? What are you, what are you going to fight for? Yeah. So that I found that was, that was pretty cool. Just, it, it's almost like a story. You're like, you're walking through, you're walking through areas like um, just a gigolo with David Lee Roth when he goes through all these different skits during the video and then he, he's singing about those different things. You get, you know, Michael Jackson and they got uh, uh, Billy Idol Culture Club and they got Billy yeah. Idol. It, it, it's almost like when you're rapping, you're going through these different eras. Yeah, which... ab absolutely. So uh, was so... this intentional or is Todd just making you sound no, he's... incredibly profound? He's He's definitely hit uh, definitely touched on a few points. Um, I like to bury, I like, like hip hop's repetitive. You're usually using a loop or a sample. Right. But I like to bury stuff in there to the, like, like he mentioned, I was like, Oh, I didn't notice that before. It's like, yeah, it was, it's subtle, but it keeps people coming back. It's uh, the trick to sampling. I, my approach is sampling. Uh, I'm not a, I, I do do a couple uh, songs like original that are like, me using the keyboards and, and stuff like that but my my i grew up in the 90s uh it was all sampling back then it was it was the golden era of hip-hop it was 
you know, Biggie and Tupac, Dr. Dre and his prime, you know, Snoop Dogg, all these legends of the, of the genre were from that era. And it was all sampling, um, back then. And, uh, that's, and I, and you know what, I just, when I was young, I was, I, I, I just fell in love with it. And, uh, I always had this, uh, when I would listen to music, I would always be like, yo, that would be a great sample. Right. And, and then one day I'm like, you know what, I would really like to get into, to, to, to beat making. I think I have an ear for this stuff. And, uh, I just started, uh, the, the, the drum pad that I got here is a machine. And, uh, so you're going to send you're going to send me a link to whatever the hell that machine is later. Cause I, th that's my next purchase. So you tell called, me what to buy. It's called a, a machine mark. This is, well, this is, they got d multiple models. This is a Mark three, but they have a sexy new model. I really was looking at but anyway, uh, it's made by native instruments and, uh, oh, it is made by, Oh wait. So it's the native one. Yeah. Cause I use, I use native instruments on like Todd uses Reaper, right? He's still using Reaper, but I use uh, uh, Magics, or Music Maker. I have all the native. I have a whole shitload of native stuff hooked up hooked up to that. So, oh, their their uh, their digital instruments and plugins are are the best. Um, I never even thought of looking into their stuff. Have you? Are you familiar with the native Todd native instruments? Uh, yeah, I remember the NI like the symbol. Yeah. For it, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like those samples that you use in your music it's not it's not mainstream stuff that you would say oh i know what that's from or i know what that's from so this is all stuff that you've kind of accumulated over the years so when you do go play definitely though you'll need some records so you can <laughs> you can grab some more samples out of and some and obscure stuff so it, it it's just totally random yeah i you know really what? i've been looking at the I've been actually getting into DJing a little bit. Not, I don't want to say I'm a DJ or anything, but yeah. I've been looking at mixing with turntables and stuff lately. And, uh, and, uh, getting some real turntables is definitely something, uh, and scratching some records up is definitely something I'm definitely thinking about. <laughs> so not the digital ones. You want the actual the record with the yeah, style. Want, to just, you know, do the whole original. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I watch DJ Jazzy Jeff do his thing. And I just Jazzy Jeff is fucking awesome, man. He is amazing. And we have some good people uh from, from Canada doing their thing, you know, like a lot of DJ Scratch Bastard is a is a legend and uh and he's the man. Like people don't even realize that we have amazing talent in this in this country, so that's doing their mm -hmm. thing in hip hop. I'm sorry, the talent in Canada is probably like incredibly un underrated. Like there's, I don't know. I find like the music in Canada is just ten levels above like the U.S. For example, European stuff is really good too. But like, I don't know. I always find the U.S. is, I think, a little bit behind the times in terms of mainstream. I think the U.S. My theory is they're just monetized a little more than Canada. Canada, you gotta oh. put your heart into it a little more. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna make any money, so you better love what you're doing. Yeah, you better love what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think we made thirty seven dollars as dome. I think that's uh on Spotify. Oh man, Spotify. You, broke a, you guys broke a profit. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well we yeah, we recorded in house, right? Todd did all the did all the recording. Yeah. Right, right, right. It was a pay to play thing, so it wasn't yeah. it wasn't to make money, it was just to put new music out there and you have to pay <laughs> to do that every month. Oh yeah. Because you Tell get about point point zero 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 one penny per per play, so what's that work out to? Like ten cents uh, a month. <laughs> I think we made a bunch. We made more money than normal because we actually sold. Um, like we actually people actually bought the album instead of just like streams. Yeah, it's um, always buy the physical album, and and it's way more profitable for the person who who's created it also. Which really I just had a, I just had a fucking idea. Did you guys hear about uh, what's the, who's the head of Spotify? Oh my god, the big the head. He he made a comment. Oh, I wanted to get your opinion about this. Okay, so he basically said that um, it's cheap to make music. Like it costs almost nothing to make music. 
and then artists should just create more content with the intent of Spotify. So Spotify can make more money. You guys just need to make more content and put it out because it costs you nothing anyway. So you can, so we'll have more content on Spotify so I can make more money. Are you familiar with the? Yes, I heard about this. Okay, so I, w- I want to hear your, your take on how music is, is it's just content. Well, you know, I didn't get into making music to be a content creator. Now, I understand that content creation is a 100% a necessary part of making modern music. But, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't get into music. I make I got into music to make music, not not to create content, not to be a a, a well, you are a brand, but you know, creating content saying? is putting a picture on Instagram nowadays, right? Like they they consider yeah. that content. Well, Taking yeah, a picture I mean, of your fucking bacon and eggs, you know, right? You know, <laughs> well, here I'm I'm hey everybody I'm at Walmart checking out the new <laughs> sales. <sighs> Follow me on Instagram. Yeah, like, just bought a microwave. Uh, we're gonna do the unboxing later on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Gonna, I'm sure that if there's a button. niche market for for microwave unboxings. <laughs> I would watch that. Actually, you know, <laughs> who's ever doing that? I'm with it. I need a microwave. This this house ain't got one right. Okay, now, well, so I, well I some you, before you buy it, make sure you get your camera set up, and then uh, you know. <laughs> And and you get like ten ten thousand hits on, on your YouTube channel just like that. Uh yeah, because everyone wants Yeti's opinion on the microwave. I, I mean, we come from cold environments. We gotta heat that yeah. shit up properly. If you were the if you were the outfit, I'm sure you get a lot of a lot of hits on it. Oh, absolutely. Ah, uh, the outfit. Yep. So Usually, wait, have you ever performed with that outfit? <laughs> I'm still waiting to bust that out. Cause I, you know what, I bought it at the end of like uh, winter, and I'll be damned if I'm uh, wearing that in the summertime <laughs> during any show. That's why I was asking. God. Well, we, um, when they're when they when they practice together and and all that, I mean, all these places. I mean, the guy from Spotify is not too far off from the, the places where you play at a club, because it's like they don't really realize what's involved in creating this music sure it's it's it it didn't cost anything but it costs you your time i mean especially if you're i mean being one person or being five people i mean you're putting you're putting just as much practice as anyone else so i mean you want to get paid for your i mean it's not like you're gonna you know gonna play a show and you're gonna retire right you, you don't want a couple of bucks for your time so i i can see where He's he's got that same kind of mentality as a as a, as a nightclub owner. I feel like um um just that like like if, if the CEO of Spotify didn't work for like six months, for example, didn't didn't work for six months, didn't make money for six months, didn't collect a salary for six months, or didn't get any bonuses for six months because he was too busy making an album he'd want to get paid for that time, right? Like if, if someone's recording an album, it takes them six months to make that album. That's time that they're not playing live and making money from gigging. Uh, they're not selling any merch. They're not doing anything. They're just making the album. That's all they're doing. And they're paying somebody to engineer it, master it, all that sort of stuff. And I, that's worth that's feedback, but... <laughs> What's that, Todd? And you want to hope that you, you know, if, if that's your, your main income too, you want to make sure you're going to, you know, get, get something out of it oh my god nothing is cheap in music i can't believe he says what does he say uh, there's no it costs cost next to creating to music uh no he says there's zero cost to making music no, no close to zero to cost is what he said yeah close to zero cost no 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 offense but this one chord <laughs> to run this to my speaker over there Cost like eighty goddamn dollars. So <laughs> that's like, just a chord. Yeah, not the drum pad alone is that like a thousands of dollars. It, it, it's 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 crazy that anyone would say that now. And your time you mentioned as well, like you could invest that time in a lot of other things, like making some serious money. <laughs> but you're doing what you love, right? You're trying to yeah. put some put some. Take a take a shot at something, right? So, 
uh, that's crazy that he would say anything. But this is obviously someone who doesn't love music, doesn't make music, no. doesn't understand music. He just knows how to monetize music, and that's yeah. that's a whole different thing. So I fucking hate Spotify. So is he being boycotted now? <laughs> no, no. no. People no? just keep people keep going to Spotify. I don't get it. What's it's the allure? They're lazy. It's they're lazy. It's it's easy. You just slap on a playlist. Uh, what is it? Wednesday tomorrow? Wacky Wednesday playlist. Slap that yep. on, and you'll get some the same. <laughs> The same 30 songs they've been playing for 30 years, but whatever. <laughs> it's on Spotify. But it, but the, the, I, I've heard that com- the complaint that comes up is, well, I don't want to I don't want to create new playlists on another streaming platform. Why not? I, I know when I was like when, like in the 90s and stuff, like you know at the advent of Napster and stuff, I was still burning CDs to play in my car. I was still ripping. Like I would go to the store buy the latest Kiss album or the latest Bullet Boys album or the latest uh, Tom Waits album. First thing I did as soon as I got home, open the CD, put it pop into my computer, rip the CD, have the digital files. And then I would make a mix. Uh, this is my favorite track off this album. So I'll take track three from here, track four from this album. I'll, you know, I'll put a little bit, a little bit of me first in the gimme gimme's and then I'll build the mix out of it. And building the mix to me is more important than someone building you a mix. I think building your own mix is more important than someone building you a mix. I don't know. Well, man, someone builds me a mix. We're we're having uh, like marriage talks or something. Like that. exactly it's, right. It's it's on. No, you're yeah, right. You like music? I'm going to build you a mix. Yeah. <laughs> no, music used to. Well, it's still. I don't want like trash new music but like you're, I, I think the point you're trying to touch on is it used to take effort you used to i remember recording uh the radio onto cassettes yeah. and burning cds uh just so you could play it in your on your disc man yep. and uh and now everything's just on your damn phone you know it's it's a different era we live in uh People don't have to, you don't have to line up for tickets anymore. It's just, it's just low entry. And I think that's the point the Spotify guy was trying to make. I don't think he was trying to say it's, it's zero cost, but it's low entry these days. And I, and I would agree, you know, you know, for me to do all this stuff that I'm doing, uh, back in the early nineties would have cost an, an, an astronomical amount of money. Sure. Oh God, yeah. yeah, yeah. And now I can just and now the technology is it's still a heavy invest. It's still not cheap, but like I can get all everything I need and do it in my basement. You know. Uh, yeah, it's true. So but the other entry. thing, the other thing that's different though than back then, I think, is because there's so much of it out there that you have to put more effort into it to make it distinctive. So like what you're doing, you're, you're, you, you get these, these things kind of in the background kind of playing in your songs, like these little loops you got going on, like you're putting extra effort in to make sure that it's not a one and done. You got to listen to the song, but then you listen to it again, you catch new things and you listen to it again, you catch new things. That's a lot of extra effort to kind of stand out. Like if there's more, you can't just like in the old days what the Beatles did, right? There's a recorder in the middle of the room, everyone's standing in a circle around the recorder. And it's one take. Like, yeah, I probably took some effort to write that song. Sure. But it's one it's one take, two takes, three takes, and then you're done. So nowadays, you can't just do that. You can't put a microphone in a room and go. Although it might be interesting if people did that nowadays. But, you know, you, you got to be more inventive. So the time it takes to, to, to create something a bit more original, um, you know, but then again, what gets played on the radio nowadays, so I'm going, uh, I think I'm going off on a, on a tangent here, but I, w- I was listening to, we had the radio on in the car, everything that was being played. Like I would listen to a song, the whole song from beginning to end, no change in beat, not even a splash anywhere or a crash, same beat. And then the bass, oh, don't, 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 don't. For the whole song, 
The only thing different was what the singer was doing, but that wasn't very good either. So nowadays you can literally, okay, here's my beat. Okay, good. Here's my bass line. Good. I'll, I'll add in a few. Okay, we're good. And then I'll just create a lyric. And then it's literally 20 minutes to create the song. No effort put in. I like what you're doing. You're not doing, you're, you're seeing what works. Like that's real music. It doesn't matter if someone's sampling. Some people say, oh, sampling, you know, it's not real. No, it's fucking real. If you're doing it right and you're playing it together, you're still creating music. But what's on the radio, it's not, you know, it's not created by the artist. It's created by algorithms and shit. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. With something that bugs me. No, I hear you. It's funny when people talk about sampling, and then I'll I'll start pointing out, like people don't realize how much great music has been sampled out there. Songs, and I'm not talking new stuff. I'm talking old stuff. Like Prince used to sample so much stuff. Oh God, yeah. And and you know, you I'll show them like. Uh, the who and I'll be like that's a sample they're using in that song but it's your favorite rock band that you know sampling has mm-hmm. been around for a very 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 and sampling very the old blues time. artists from the 20s and 30s right yeah like, like how many people in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s did that like yeah. Led Zeppelin anybody like really that's a sample when you come down to it what's that Todd's fun- got something to say Funky Cold Medina, or whatever it's called. At the very beginning, it sounds like the beginning of one of the Van Halen songs. Yeah. Alex, like, dum, 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 dum. oh, yeah. that's definitely a sample. I I yeah. don't know which exact song that is, but that's a hundred percent a sample. Yeah. Oh, now here, dum, 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 dum. Eh, eh, eh. Jamie's crying. Yeah, I think that's it. There you go. See, yeah. see, I just had to do the drums. I knew exactly who, which drum part it was. I know a little bit too much about Alex Van Halen. <laughs> it was all about the drums back then. Mm-hmm. Now it's all about the bass. <laughs> no trouble. Well, about... Yeah, no trouble. So can you can you describe your so you you've got your drum pad there, right? Yeah. You're creating your own beats on there. Something I'm fascinated by. So if, if you're when you're coming up with a with a song, like what it's probably different all the time, but like, can you give me an example of like how you come up with something? Like, does it start with the beat? Does it start with a musical just, line? Like, where does it come from? Most of the time, it's a beat. Most of the time, it's a beat, and it's it's not even like a full flushed out beat. It's an eight bar loop. It's a it's a sample that I I really caught my ear, and I'll start laying it down. Or even if it didn't catch my ear, I'll start. I'll like a song and I'll just start playing around with it until I find something that I want that loops, right? So I'll get my eight bar loop down and then I'll start building a drum track around it. Now, sometimes I add a lot of drums. Sometimes I add just a really subtle amount of drums. It depends on the sample. And it depends on what you want uh, the audience to feel, right? Like I got some tracks that have barely any drums in them. And then I have some tracks that are you know that oh, that intro track has a lot of has that 808 kick drum in it which kind of is is a contrast with the 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 blues singer singing in the background so that was my design with that track i want like okay i got this blues guy he's just doing his thing he's singing his track playing his guitar but it's just him right it's just him playing there's no drum track or anything and it's even and it's live, so he's off beat and everything. So I had to sync it all up. It took, that was a monster of a sampling effort on that track, but it all worked out in the end. I got my drums right, and then I, but I wanted those eight oh eights in there because it was just like, why would a blues guy ha- ever have eight oh eight drum kick drums on? <laughs> <laughs> but but, but I, you, your crazy mind thought, no, that does go with that. If you just do this and this and then. You know, hundred moves later, you get it figured out. Yeah, it took a while too on that one. Sometimes they come easy. Sometimes I, I and sometimes they, I, I don't know. I, it takes effort, but I get there. <laughs> you know, what would so be we'll, a good project, and and I don't know if anybody's ever done this before, but you know, when, when they say you know, dark side of the moon, when you listen to that and you watch Wizard of Oz, and if you sync it up properly, the mood changes as the scenes change. If you could create your own with a popular movie, 
with your own beats and mix and things going on in the background as the movie's playing while the volume is off you could really get people to really it would kind of kick it up a notch i guess what you could say oh, that's great you, say, you know what listen to my music watch this movie at the same time it kind of forces people to say oh cool really and it, it kind of peaks their little antennas and they go okay well let's try that so then they'll you know buy your music and and, and try it on whatever popular movie that, that you'd want to uh, to put it against it. Just something just, I don't know, it just kind of just came to me for some odd reason. I don't know why, but. I have 100% tried to do that. There's a whole new other really? level of, of copyrights that are involved when you're dealing with uh, movie footage, especially if you want to score like a long sequence of movie footage. No, no, you wouldn't do any of the movie, movie footage. You would just strictly the music, but you could implement it. It's almost like you're watching the movie as you're creating it's almost like like those silent movies or when it was just a piano in the background there was no people talking you just turn the volume off from the movie and you just play your music in the background fuck that'd be wicked man you don't have to worry about copyrights for you know because yeah, it's, it's your stuff it'll all be your stuff well the foot no the footage itself is copyrighted i tried to make music videos using my tracks over like old, old, but I'm not even talking like new movies. Like I'm talking like old, old movies that I don't think anyone knew about. And they would, and they would get slapped with the copyright warning. I was just trying to put it out there for fun anyway, but it wouldn't even let me, like, it's like, yeah. you can't, mo- yeah. not only could I not monetize the video, it wouldn't even let me post it, which I was like, but, but I think, but I think the key is just saying, just watch this movie and listen to my shit. Do they sync up? That's all you wouldn't even have to include the movie. That's for someone else to do. I'm going to play oh. the movie. Hit mute and put BS raps on. Yeah, I, I have. You know what? One of the things I would love to do one day is score a movie. I think that would be like the bee's knees of production. Like, and a lot of the tracks I make have like a I don't know, kind of like a movie score feel. I feel like like they're very, yeah, there's a cinematic. Yeah, there's a cinematic feel to them. Yeah, there's ups and downs. Well, we have our own movie industry here in town, don't we? Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could always try and hook up with them and just, you know, pitch your idea. I don't see why that wouldn't work. I mean, all you can say is no. <laughs> I mean, you could do a, your own little sample as an example, not something you could post anywhere where they take it down, but something you could actually take to them and say, "Look, what do you think of this?" And since you're producing your own shit, you're you're a reason. one man one man machine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They can save a lot of money. Hey, uh, Winnipeg movie industry, if you're listening to this. <laughs> Email me bsraps204 at gmail.com right now. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Um, I so what if you were going to do a movie, what what movie would it be that you would that you would like something out there? If you were to do Todd's idea, I'm curious what movie you would pick to turn the volume down on the movie. Oh, do your own score on it. I would do a western or like. Well, Wizard of Oz would be. A, I think the first one I ever did was Wizard of Oz, and it and it fit really well with the beat I did. And I was yeah, that just, goes it into was, it goes into public conscious or public um, domain right away. By the way. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah. That's a good point. I'll have to keep a keep an eye on that. That'd be awesome. So Wizard of Oz. What was the other one? Some some old spaghetti western. Just the uh, so the one I was specifically working with was called is called the Wild Bunch. Oh yeah, okay. Even, have you heard, have you do you know that one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a big western, I do. but I thought it was old old enough that everyone forgot about it. <laughs> I think stuff in the '30s is is coming uh, in, into into the public right away. Oh yeah, Mickey Mouse. I think just Wild Bunch is like '40s is '50s. I think '50s or '60s or something. Uh, I would say 40s or yeah, 50s. You're gonna be around for 20 years, or oh, <laughs> you can wait 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I age, age in like a fine wine, sir. <laughs> I think I, you know, if if I was to do it, I think I would pick the movie High Fidelity. Ooh, that'd be a good one. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Okay, so when you're doing your when you're doing your raps and you come over the raps, um. What stream of consciousness is it, or how deliberate is it? 
it it depends on the track. A lot of my raps are. Um, it's very rare for me to take a write one song start to finish. Like, I'm gonna start a song, and write this song start to finish. Usually, what I'm doing is I I have a like a, a rhyme book, and I'm just whenever I think of something like a good bar or a good line or a good phrase even it doesn't even have to be like a a a rap lyric i just write it down right and these are all things that even if it doesn't click with something i'm working on at that time it's something i can use later inspiration happens to come at the most random of times i find if you try to force it at least for me it just don't it just don't happen i have to be in the moment and when the moment comes i have to Make sure I jump on it and I ride that freaking wave until the moment's gone. So do you write it down or do you use your phone and, and wrap into your phone with the yeah. idea? No, I'll write it down in my phone. I have a notebook at home here where I write a couple things down and then I'll transcribe it into my phone. Um, something about having a pen just feels right when you're writing hip hop. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I don't think I've ever written ly- like typed lyrics out. I think I've always written my lyrics out. Yeah, I oh, think so. Yeah, it, I don't know. It just feels if you're typing it, it just feels like you're like writing an essay. If you're writing it out on a piece of paper with a pen, it just feels more real. Wrong. Yeah, if I'm, I feel like I'm texting someone if I'm yeah writing it on my phone. You know what I mean? But. Uh, so I'll usually start off with like a, a loose theme. I'll take one of my, my beats I've made and I'll have a loose theme that kind of fits the the feeling of the track. Some tracks are lighter, some tracks are darker, me angry, whatever the emotional uh, feel of the track is. And I'll build a loose theme around that. And then honestly, the hardest part of writing is the first, is the first, like for me is the first like four bars. Like it's, it's all the intro is always the hardest and once yep. you get over that hurdle it just flows after that and then i'll i'll take from my 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 uh treasure chest the treasure chest of lyrics we'll say and i'll i'll if i need them i'll sprinkle them in there where where they fit or where they like honestly i like some of the lyrics i write are very Sometimes there, there's a lot of uh, thought behind them. Sometimes I'm just trying to grab the listener's attention. Like, whoa, shit, what the hell did he just say? That was wild. You know what I mean? Like, he, he can't say shit like that. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, it has, yeah, it has to be a little bit, a little outrageous, a little bit. It's like when you're, when you're reading a novel, when they first start, it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're stuck. <laughs> now what? Shit, that's my next song. <laughs> you don't have that hook that hooks ain't easy either like hooks are an art in themselves i'll 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 do a lot of tracks with no hook but that's also a challenge because you're writing the longest verse you've ever written in your life wow wow i heard that wow are you gonna do something first brian <laughs> <laughs> David, what? What? David, sounds like Wait, the zipper on my uh, my parka. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever taken a straw, a McDonald's straw, and you go? <laughs> <laughs> That's what fucking only Todd. <laughs> only Todd comes up with that shit. Yeah, here, here, sample that. <laughs> That's a hot sound. Just start making <laughs> making noises and, and things. And have you ever done that? Like made samples of, of 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 just noises of things around the house that you can turn on or off or or just make noises with? I've tried. It doesn't I haven't been able to use any of that yet right. in like a track that I like. But yes, <laughs> I've tried to make like just record random sounds. Maybe I can use this pot banging against something for a, a a drum sound you know you never know and some white white noise you get the dryer in the background just you can just hear the dryer just <laughs> fumbling it good beat nothing, in there right nothing Have distinctive you, but yeah you could do a beat just put a heavy towel in there every time it goes flop flop, flop. <laughs> oh man how'd you come up with those drums throw some, throw some change in there you know <laughs> 
really mix it up. Put a couple of shoes in your dryer. Oh, yeah. Shoes. Nice, heavy. That'd be awesome. The dryer's going to be paid. Put some credits. Give it the credits to that song. (laughs) (laughs) There's somebody... There's a... Was that? Uh, if you notice, I don't know if you if you like Queen at all. I, I I don't particularly like Queen, but there's some of the stuff I like. But if you see in the writing credits, th- these guys were were crazy because they'd be, uh, I'm credited with, uh, you know, guitar, credited with piano, so and so played the bass, and then one person I played the gong, it's just gong, Roger Taylor. Like, isn't that part of the drum kit? No, I played the gong and I played the drums. I think that's just, just I, I think that's just giving the gong its proper respect, sir. <laughs> uh be a good yeah. spot to put in a gong show a little bit there. Some the old gong show from the seventies. Fucked. Now there's that's something you should fucking sample. There's your next samples. You gotta grab samples from the gong show. Go on YouTube, look for the gong show. Yeah. Or Hollywood Squares with some of the fucking bits on Hollywood Squares. That's that's a great idea. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charles Nelson Riley, and I'm <laughs> hammered on this episode of Hollywood Squares. It's <laughs> a great impression. I don't know how I pulled that out of my ass, but somehow it was already there. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. oh. Man. Man, okay. Do you want do you want to do something first? You you could do something like on the fly, like live. Oh yeah, I was thinking I might do something for you guys. Let's see if I can get my levels right here. You probably might, you might recognize this one. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna do a test here real quick. Yo, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah? Alright. All right. This one might sound familiar. Lucid debut. Never been heard before. Never haven't even recorded this one yet, guys. And DJ from the own line, you know? You know? I I just right now we should start show. Downtown with the honey deal, got a funny feel. Now that Pixie's gone, how am I supposed to get my fill? I move past it. Need a whack, MC4 bill is drastic. Facts is he stay bent like elastics. I give them nothing but realness. They throw shit at the wall just to see what sticks. You can never ever put me in a box that fits. I'ma talk my shit. It's logic that something's got to give. Ever since Yeti made the pure entry, that's when they learned that the rhymes were exemplary. Y'all rip a god of war in half like the Sandra. What? Sight sons all the war from memory. On the way, oh behave. He used to have a crush on Romy Mays and won't stop till he rolling in the jag. I could break it on my legs, still pull up like Snoop at the VMAs. Everybody watch, be amazed. Check the stats, drop the S for some R's. Hit you with the boot and rap summer. Play with the words and disperse facts. It's a Mark Morrison return on the back. But yet he was your followers. I don't make this music for followers. Excuse me as I not apologize. I'm dollar wise, these clowns is broke. Pennywise, if I open up a window, we'd smoke a block the skies. Moons is kind of rise. Even the mental, the way it's so natural, you would think it's accidental. But it's quite clear that these kids lack essential vitamins, minerals, and credentials. You got potential, but like family, so what? Blood's thicker than water, but the paper soaks are both up. Best on the list, who would have guessed it exists? And you've been looking at it ever since I stepped in this bitch. Five. Sean Geek Fast Fret Podcast. Check it out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I like to... I can't believe no one's... Have you ever heard that sampled before? I can't believe no one... I've never heard that sampled before, no. I can't believe no one's done it. I don't know if Todd recognized... If, if, I don't know if Todd recognized what song that was. 
Uh, Which hip song that was? Uh, I'm not good with names. That's <laughs> Grace 2 from Day for Night, opening lead track on that album. My favorite hip track of all time. Yeah, well, so probably bad. mine too, or one of them for sure. It was the song they played on Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live when Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Right? Well, they, well they, they played that song, and then Lauren Michael said, uh, can you play that other song? Um, the other blow at high dough. Can you play New Orleans? No, 